James Cameron thinks big, whether directing a movie epic like Titanic or creating the awesome alien world of Avatar. And he loves a challenge when he's away from Hollywood as well. His latest adventure is as sweeping in scope as anything he's conjured for the silver screen. Cameron decided to explore the blackest depths of our oceans, as far as man has ever ventured. It was a treacherous, some might say foolhardy undertaking, but he did it with the help of a little Aussie know-how. Filmmaker James Cameron is a man who lives life large. It's been a blast. <laughs> family show, Donnie, family show. Oh, it's been a beep beep blast. Love all, have fun. Have fun, okay. exactly. Just hours earlier, in the dead of night in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, he was about to be the loneliest person on the planet. Good. See ya. Nice and tight. In a bizarre looking craft built to withstand incomprehensible pressure, he begins an incredible journey, more than 11 kilometres to the deepest point of the ocean. Prime rib, prime rib, uh, deep sea challenger is launched. I was probably apprehensive before the dive, but once you get into the process and you're in the countdown and you're going in, way in the back of your mind there's a little voice that says, you're being bolted into a sub that's about to go to the deepest place in the world. You know, but you, you have to tune that voice out. That's the voice you ignore. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Any dive this deep is a ride into the unknown. As surface light disappears and the temperature nears freezing, an alien world appears. After a two hour free fall, James Cameron lands on a muddy, murky ocean floor. A place that's never been seen before. As I slid across the bottom, there's a big mark down there that I'm sure will be there for another hundred years. So that's Jim's mark. That's right. I was trying to spell my name. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a very long way from James Cameron's day job. Mr. James Cameron! Of red carpet premieres. Connection. And calling the shots on film sets. He's the Canadian-born director who has thrilled us with blockbuster... Oh, my God. ...after blockbuster. I'm the king of the world! Action! And it was creating these films that gave him the motivation and the deep pockets for his other great love, deep water exploration. We're right in the middle of the avalanche. You couldn't be any further from Hollywood right now. I couldn't be further from Hollywood and I couldn't be happier. And I don't mean that as a diss of Hollywood, it's just that, that I have to kind of code switch when I go back into that world. But the very different worlds of Hollywood and exploration have become inseparable to him. Oh, say it's not the clock. It's, it looks like After clock making Titanic, he was inspired to dive the real wreck. Oh, yeah, that, this is the clock we did in the movie. <laughs> so he approached his great friend, Australian producer Andrew White. Oh man, look at this thing. And together, they set out to explore and document the hidden wonders deep below the surface. <laughs> you see in this thing? Look at this. This is like the ugliest fish in the world. But as with all adventurers, their dreams just got bigger, or in their case, deeper. Look this silt we're throwing up. This is the last frontier for exploration on planet Earth. So you've got a whole continent down there that we know nothing about. Just and waiting to be discovered. Waiting to be discovered. And the deepest frontier of all is the Mariana Trench near the Philippines. Incredibly, in 1960, a two-man submarine got to the bottom, but wasn't sophisticated enough to collect samples or take so much as a photograph. It was a world still begging to be explored and recorded. The launching point for this dive is here in Guam, a tiny island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. A day's sail away, James Cameron will be going deeper than Mount Everest is high. But this adventure started seven years ago in the most unlikely of places. Thank you. 
Leichhardt in Sydney's Inner West and nestled amongst its cafes, one of the movie industry's great secrets has been hiding. Ron Allum is a television technician by trade with a passion for extreme diving. Do you mind, boy? So this is your baby? And he's the one man James Cameron would entrust to build his sub. It's an impressive beast. Yeah. So. Ron's engineering challenge was to create a sub strong enough to withstand the crushing deep, but agile enough to explore the seabed. I suppose it's you know, like a rocket. You know, it's designed for vertical travel. You're pretty but... clever. <laughs> oh, thank you. You know it. Could you reckon I can have a look inside? Yeah, absolutely. You have to climb up the, up the ladder. Uh... Yeah, that's it. There's not much room, is there? That's yeah, pretty tight. Um... Okay. Now, what you have to do is you have to get your feet towards you it and get right. your bottom down. Yeah, that's it. And you then you can lay into that position. There we go. It's quite cosy in here, actually. <laughs> yeah. So I'm ready to go to the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But this historic expedition was very nearly cancelled at the very last minute. Just how close it came is a story that hasn't been told until now. Uh, Maybe they can take the ball off. I don't know. In February, during final tests off the New South Wales south coast, James Cameron's original partner on this whole expedition, Andrew White, along with cameraman Mike Degree, were killed as their chopper took off to film the sub. It really called everything we were doing into question because it, it forced us to, to kind of stare into the mirror and stare into our own mortality and think about what risk really means. And it, was, it took a few days uh, and everybody sort of thought, well, if we walk away from this, then, then everything that they worked for and that they stood for uh, is being thrown away. Finally, after personal tragedy and logistical challenges, it's time for last-minute preparations. This pond actually has never been dived in until this expedition. For marine geologist Paddy Fryer, all the excitement is tempered by knowing the risks of heading into such an extreme environment. Pressure down there is about 16,000 pounds per square inch. Which kind of means what? Uh, it means take the Eiffel Tower and turn it upside down and put it on your big toe. <laughs> That's the kind of pressure we're That's talking about. That's the kind about. of pressure we're talking about. And this is our hatch data right here. And there's another pressure James Cameron has to contend with on his marathon dive. How do you go to the bathroom? Well, did you ever go on a long car trip with your parents? And they had <laughs> I'm like where they this had is going. like a little bottle <laughs> because they didn't want to pull over. Okay, well That's it's hard. like it's okay. like that, yeah. There's right. a little bottle. We call it a range extender. Mm. All right, Jim. All right, buddy. Locked down, James Cameron is now completely on his own, in a vessel like no other. Prime rib, prime rib, uh, deep sea challenger is launched. Unlike a conventional sub, the deep sea challenger is tipped on its nose. It has just a small metal sphere for the pilot. The rest of the body is made out of super light, crush proof foam. Dragging the sub down is half a ton of weights. Releasing them, sends it back to the surface. Yep, just coming into view. But if anything should go wrong, this untethered craft is well beyond the reach of rescue. You're in a place that's so remote, nobody can come and help you. I mean, if I got into trouble in Earth orbit, we could always ask the Russians to come and help us, or even the Chinese. There's no, there's no help where, where we went with this vehicle. All right, we got us a Dumbo. Hoping for this for a while. On James Cameron's many previous voyages into the deep, he has filmed the bizarre and improbable. Every single dive, you're going to see something you've never seen before. But the Mariana Trench is triple those depths again. And here, on the world's deepest ocean floor, the search for life is not unlike exploring on distant planets. It's remote and hostile. What I find amazing is the fact that more people have walked on the moon than have gone where you just went. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It is amazing and it's right here on Earth. So I'm down there feeling as isolated as if I was on the far side of the moon by myself. And guess who calls me? 
my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Which just, you know, men out there, if there's any doubt in your mind whatsoever, they will find you. <laughs> Pilot coming out. Welcome back. After a lifetime of dreaming, seven years building, and untold millions spent, he did it. This is uh, mud from the Challenger Deep. And not only that, he brought back some of the trench floor for research. So this is as precious as gold. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> More you know, so. You know how much it costs to get that? <laughs> it's not much to look at, but for Patty, even the discovery of bacteria in this tiny bag of mud is scientific pay dirt. This trip has been like Christmas for you, hasn't it? Oh gosh, it? I'll say it certainly has. <laughs> 35 years Christmas of, in April. <laughs> of studying this trench and you've learnt more in the last two weeks. Oh, it's amazing. It really has been a trip. <laughs> and it won't be the last. I can't uh, believe this was your home for 55 days. 55 days, yeah. yeah. In the extraordinary life of James Cameron, you get the sense that an even bolder adventure is never far away. So do you consider yourself more an explorer than a filmmaker, or...? Tough question to answer. When I'm making a film, I think about exploring. When I'm exploring, I think about making a film. <laughs> the grass is always greener on the other <laughs> side. No, I, I don't make me choose. <laughs> I want it all. 